What up, Hyperchange? Welcome to another episode. Today we're gonna to talk about Tesla's role in rebuilding the grid in Puerto Rico. Just a month ago, Puerto Rico was hit with one of the most devastating hurricanes in its history, Hurricane Maria. This left the majority of the territory without power, without access to clean water, and without access to the majority of their roads. Today we're gonna to talk about the potential of Tesla's solar and battery technology and whether they will be able to bring power back to people faster than the traditional utilities would be. If you'll take a look at this data from NPR, it looks like only about 21.6% of Puerto Rico had been returned to power as of October 19th. Therefore, three out of four people in Puerto Rico still do not have access to electricity. Although this may sound crazy, this isn't the first time something like this has happened in Puerto Rico. Back in 1989 with Hurricane Hugo, it took over six months for Puerto Rico to get its grid back online and to get everybody electricity after the storm hit. The reason why it takes so long is because Puerto Rico is on a centralized grid system. The bulk of their energy is generated by burning petroleum, which is shipped in from abroad. This is not only incredibly expensive, but means that transition lines are giving power throughout the whole country. If these gets knocked down because of high winds or because of flooding during a storm, it takes months and millions of dollars and tons of manpower to go out and manually rebuild these power lines. Therefore, Elon Musk has been talking with the governor of Puerto Rico to develop new microgrid solutions combining Tesla's solar panels with their batteries to be able to build microgrids all over the island of Puerto Rico that would be much more resilient to these storms and be able to provide clean energy and get them up and running in much faster than the six month timeline that it would take to get utilities back online. This is a super exciting development for a couple reasons. Not only does it mean that Puerto Rico could get power faster, but it also is a huge opportunity to showcase the power economies of scale that renewables have achieved in recent years. Solar panel prices have been dropping, battery costs have been dropping, making renewable technologies more economical than burning fossil fuels. This is why earlier this year, Tesla announced a massive project to build over 50,000 solar panels in Hawaii with a ton of batteries to be able to power a significant amount of the island of Kauai. Hawaii, much like Puerto Rico, import gets the bulk of its energy from importing petroleum and burning fossil fuels. This is the reason that Hawaii has the highest cost of electricity of any state in the US, and this is why they were a perfect candidate for Tesla to showcase its renewable technologies. If you think about it, at the test, at, as the cost of these renewables goes down, the states with who have the highest cost of embedded utility right now are the first to be disrupted. And that is why Puerto Rico is such an exciting opportunity. If they were listed along with all the US states on the cost of electricity, Puerto Rico would be the second and most expensive behind only Hawaii. So this makes sense as the next place for Tesla to go in and build a massive grid scale project anyway. And this, these talks didn't just come along with the hurricane. In fact, Tesla and Puerto Rico were already in talks to build renewable microgrids before the hurricane hit. The recent news is only accelerating the need for these renewable solutions that Tesla can provide. So if you take a look at this data, over 90% of Puerto Rico's energy generation comes from non-renewable sources like petroleum, natural gas, and coal. And remember, these have to be imported. Puerto Rico is an island that is not mining these for themselves. These have to be imported. That is why the cost is so high and that is why it makes so much more sense to go renewable and get energy locally from the sun and from the wind and store it in batteries and go off the grid that way. If you wanna compare te uh, Puerto Rico's energy rates to the rest of that of the US, as of June 2017, the residential rate per kilowatt hour of Puerto Rico is almost 20 cents versus 13 cents for the average in the US. Commercial was 22 cents versus 11, industrial was 18 versus seven. So the opportunity here for Puerto Rico to get cheaper energy is massive and they have to rebuild the grid anyway. So now it makes sense to use this new technology. How would this actually work though? Well, Bloomberg just reported two days ago that Puerto Rico is looking into a way to be able to use FEMA funds to rebuild their energy grid with these sustainable solutions so that they will be less susceptible to coming down in the next hurricane. But that being said, there's still a ton of questions of how would Puerto Rico actually pay for this on a mass scale? Would the FEMA funds be enough to fund a full transition? Who really knows here? And remember, the bottom line is over 75% of Puerto Rico's grid either needs to be reconnected through old methods or rebuilt through renewable energy. Even though the source of funding for this new energy infrastructure is still totally up in the air, I thought it was interest interesting to calculate Tesla's economic opportunity here. At first I was thinking like, oh, this is a great project. It's a feel good thing that can help Puerto Rico. This is great marketing for PR, but will it move the needle for Tesla on a financial basis as a $60 billion company? No. But when I started crunching some numbers on the size of Puerto Rico's energy demand and how much revenue Tesla could get per megawatt hour, I was actually surprised to see that this could sort of be a needle moving amount of, 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 of a deal for Tesla. So 
To calculate how much of the revenue opportunity it would be, I took a look at Tesla's biggest battery project they did ever, which they just won with the Southern Australian government. In this, in a Fortune article about this, there's a really fascinating tidbit where Elon Musk said that if they, Tesla could not install this Southern Australian battery project within 100 days, he would pay for it on his dime and noted that this could cost Tesla 50 million or more. Why is this a key number? Because that was likely the revenue that Tesla would have gotten for the project, which is why he indicates that that's what Tesla could lose. We can use that number to say, okay, 50 million divided by 129 megawatt hours, which was the size of the project, gets us to Tesla's revenue of about 388,000 per megawatt hour for these solar storage projects. Puerto Rico has a total, total energy generation in 2015 of almost 20,000 gigawatt hours. Puerto Rico is a lot bigger than I realized. I mean, if you just think about it, I guess, their population of 3.6 million makes it over 1% of the entire US. The bulk of Puerto Rico's power going back online is not gonna be new renewables. I mean, I hope it is, but I really think they're gonna like get the utilities to rebuild these transmission lines. And that's gonna be how they get most of the country back to renewables. But it's also important to note that Puerto Rico has a goal of getting 20% of its energy renewable by 2035. I think this is an opportunity to accelerate that initiative to get there a lot faster. Even if we only assume that Puerto Rico rebuilds 10% of its new grid with renewables, so out of the 20,000 gigawatt hours, that would be 2,000 gigawatt hours, it would be a massive opportunity for Tesla. Using that same 388,000 per megawatt hour number times 2,000 gigawatt hours, aka 2 million megawatt hours, we get to a potential revenue impact of $775 million for Tesla. And remember, this is a total rough estimate. This is just revenue, this isn't gross profit, and it's just me using back of the napkin math from their Australia project. But it's fascinating to note that on some scale, they, this could be a hundreds of millions of dollars worth of revenue here if Tesla ends up building, you know, five to 10% of Puerto Rico's entire grid. Now, funding for this is still totally up in the air, so maybe Tesla would have to sell it at a discount and get no profit from it. But either way, the opportunity here is actually pretty massive. And sure, you might be saying Tesla's revenue last year was seven billion, they're gonna do over 10 billion in revenue this year. 700 million is a lot, but it would come over years and it would only be a minor percentage. Sure, but if we take a look at Tesla's battery revenue, which I've extrapolated from removing the solar energy from recent SEC filings, you'll be able to see that they displayed tremendous growth in 2016, going to 97 million, but through the first half of this year have only done 20 million in battery revenue. And a quick note on this is I'm sort of confused because they announced the two biggest battery projects in the world earlier this year, the, I, the product in Kauai I just mentioned, the product in Southern Australia that I just mentioned, that are, that are massive, that should be generating 50, 100 millions of dollars each in revenue and solar and storage for Tesla, but it doesn't look like we've actually seen those hit the income statement yet or the financials yet. That could have something to do with revenue recognition and that's part of the reason why battery revenue is looking so low in the first half of 2017. But either way, if Tesla can get several hundred million in battery revenue and solar revenue from this Puerto Rico project, it would move the needle for their energy division. And beyond that, if it works and Tesla can successfully implement all these renewable solutions and after a year or two down the road, we see a positive ROI and it starts to, the evidence starts coming out that this is in fact a lot cheaper than it would have been to re rebuild the grid with non-renewable sources, then this is only gonna cement the Elon Musk's vision of battery plus solar as the future of all of energy. Like this is a flagship project, not because it could do hundred million in revenue, but because it can prove to the world that these can work on a mass scale to power hundreds of thousands of people's homes more reliably, more cost effectively than fossil fuels. I don't know, it's such a feel good story. Like this is why I love Tesla and the brand that they have is unparalleled. What are auto companies doing? They're building software to put into their cars to cheat on emissions tests so that they don't actually have to build renewable, sustainable vehicles. Tesla is literally, when a natural disaster hits like this caused by climate change because car companies do crap like that, they literally don't talk about it, just send power walls directly to Puerto Rico, start building shit as fast as they can to get the grid back online, to start moving the needle in terms of helping people regardless of revenue impact. Like, I don't know. that to me is incredible. And like, that's the reason I love Tesla. Not only is it good from a humanitarian standpoint, but this is actually smart because it, it builds trust. It builds respect of the Tesla brand from consumers like myself and a bunch of other consumers like you guys, I'm sure. So I think that's actually a good thing in the long run. And now that I've crunched the numbers, Tesla could also be making hundreds of millions of dollars from this. Anyway, that's my wrap up on Tesla Puerto Rico. I'm gonna be following the updates. Funding for all of this new energy infrastructure is totally up in the air. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna be on the lookout for news there. If you have any ideas or anything I missed, let me know in the comments. That's Hyper Change. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.